Thank you, Daniel. Today's lesson is peace. Peace. There's candles. Peace. For those of you who know me, it's not the first word that comes to mind for me. I hear lots of things. Reverend Ken, you're so peaceful, is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Ken, you're so serene. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I spend a lot of time owning my nature, my personality, is one of action, of vitality, of movement, of excitement, of passion, joy, exuberance, <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> Someone once described it to me in enthusiasm, in theos, in God. So when the lesson came up this week for peace, I was like, oh, this is mine to learn. This is mine to do. This is mine to be here in this moment. And I was wondering if many of you haven't been experiencing the same thing. There's been a lot of turmoil in world this past couple of months. A lot of upheaval, tragedy. Just this week in Oakland, the tragic fire. How do you stay peaceful? How do you be peace? You started staying peaceful, but how do you be peace in the midst of pain, in the midst of anger, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of the holiday shopping. <laughs> How do you stay peaceful with all that barrage issue on TV, in media, in music, in our lives? How do you do that? I remember on election night this year turning on the TV and watching it, and I felt barraged by, I was switching back between channels, and because I couldn't really, like, the way they were so excited and screaming at the camera, I felt, ah, oh, this is an assault. This isn't reporting. It's de designed to hype me up. It's designed to get me all riled. And I was like, oh, I need to not watch this. <laughs> I can read it. I can stay informed, but I don't have to watch the spectacle. And so I looked at this lesson today, and especially in this holiday season, if our process of the Advent wreath is correct, and is our, if our process of the Advent wreath is this journey to unfoldment, awakening, enlightenment, what does the order mean? Faith. Belief, knowledge, assurance, faith is the assurance of things that cannot be seen. The certainty of the divine. Nothing that you can ever prove, but something you know deep inside your being. I know, I know what I'm supposed to do in life. That's an amazing gift that I didn't always know, right? So if you're not there yet, things get revealed to you in strange and wonderful ways, is all I have to say. And who knows what the next chapter is, but I know where I stand right now, where I plant my feet and I speak my truth, is holy ground. It's holy ground because I am doing what I'm supposed to do in this life. And that's what I wish for all of you, that you have that level of faith, that candle on high, that always knows what it is you're supposed to be and do in this life. Who are you at core? And what is your mission, your passion, and your purpose? Because I believe wholeheartedly that when you live from your passion, when you live from your purpose, 
that everything else falls into place. Everything aligns. What is it you're supposed to be doing? And the resources and the opportunities will show up for you. And that's, for me, when peace is essential. Because in that gap, you know how they say it in London, mind the gap, <laughs> mind the gap, in that place between faith and the next step, the next experience in your life, there's this gap where it's not manifest in the world. And if you mind the gap peacefully, mind the gap peacefully, you can get there without leaving wreckage. <laughs> when you're awake. <laughs> I, I'm hearing familiar and knowing laughs <laughs> about wreckage in my wakes. In my 12-step program, we had this process of making amends, of making amends for all those we had harmed during our using, during our uh, drinking, or whatever the 12-step is. It's part of the 12-step process. But one of my friends said to me once, I need to spend time making amends for the things I did in sobriety. <laughs> that after I got sober, I continued to create such havoc that it just because I stopped drinking or using didn't mean that my behavior stopped. <laughs> when we can be peaceful, that shifts. And there's a scripture that illustrates this for me. It's from Mark. And it talks about Jesus and his disciples. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked him. That's what it says. He rebuked him. So this, this notion that Jesus was always just nice and kind. <laughs> he rebuked them. Rebuked the wind. And said to the waves, peace. Be still. The wind calmed down. And it was completely still. He said to your disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, there are many different reasons that this scripture could have been written. The author of the Gospel of Mark could have written it to assure us and to say that Jesus was, in fact, the Son of God, the only Son of God. It could have been another parable, telling a different message underneath, underlying everything in it. I don't want to get into the biblical scholarship of this passage today, but I do want to talk about what we believe in unity. And that is that the Scripture, all Scriptures, not just the Bible, but all Scriptures, are metaphors and allegories for the unfolding divine path we're all on, our spiritual journey. And that everyone in each of the stories is us. Everyone, everyone in each of the stories is us. So look at this same passage that way. That evening, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Sometimes when the sun is setting, sometimes when we've had a long day, sometimes when we're world weary and down, you can say, it's time to do this differently. It's time to take the bridge to the other side, the boat to the other side. We all do that when we've been banging against the wall for too long. Leaving the crowd behind those who sometimes drain us, sometimes don't support us, sometimes we need to go to the other side to recharge. And there were also other boats with him. Not alone. We're all on this 
journey together, but other boats, other ideas floated along. And then, interestingly, a furious squall came up. And while this furious squall came up, Jesus was asleep on a cushion in the front of the boat. So for me, what that represents is that's our own divine nature, our own higher knowing as resting, asleep, not aware of what's going on. And at the same time, the other parts of ourselves, our disciples, right? Our disciples are worried, anxious, nervous, accusatory, right? They're saying, don't you care if we all drown? Look at this. Nothing's okay. It's all turmoil. And our disciples in our own head, how many of us have a doubting Thomas? <laughs> right? How many of us have a Peter who says they believe, but then denies it three times? Right? How many of us have a Judas? Where we betray our own ideals and our own principles. Not because we're bad, because it's just we're human. When we fall into our human side, we become the disciples worried and accusatory, call, watching the wind and saying, calling it bad, watching the waves and calling it death, watching life and calling it wrong. <clears throat> All of that going on in our head. And when we awaken our higher self, when we awaken the truth within us, we hear that loud, quiet, still voice, but insistent, say, peace, peace, be still. And all the appearances of death and danger and worry disappear and we align ourselves once more with the principles. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever it is, you are sitting here right now. You are perfectly whole, taken care of, supported, comforted, loved. And no, be still. And no, have the faith that keeps Jesus, your own Christ, your own higher nature, your own spirit, higher self, whatever you want to call it, in present mind. And I want to make this statement about this too. I just said Christ, Jesus, all the things that sometimes trigger some of us who have come from other faith traditions. Listen to those voices in your head saying, oh my God, that's wrong. That's bad. If they're there. <laughs> they're just like the disciples screaming about the wind and the waves. They're just words. And they only have the meaning that you assign them to. They only have the meaning that you assign them. Amen. Be that spiritual master in the boat and say, peace, be still, peace. one thing, one thing in your life that feels like the waves are lapping at the side of your boat, that the winds are howling. And to metaphorically and internally stand up and affirm with me, peace, be still, peace, be still. Peace. Peace. Still. And so.